Everyone from cannabis farmers to the National Park Service itself claims that ozone can be harmful to plants. I want to find out for myself how true this really is. To do this, I started by building a simple plywood box with a glass front. I then cut a hole in one far end where I mounted an ozone generator. By doing this, all the air that gets sucked into the box has to go through the ozone generator so we can get the highest concentration of ozone possible. There's a slit at the top of the glass so that the ozone can circulate out as it's depleted and then fresh air can be sucked in and converted to ozone. I got a hold of a little house plant, just a common maidenhair fern, put it in the box and fired up the ozone generator. I let this run all night long and I did it overnight so that excess heat wouldn't be an issue. And I came back the next morning after being in there for about 13 hours and checked it out to see what happened. Not surprisingly, the fern seemed a little dried out. The leaves were just a little crispy, some of them were slightly discolored, and the soil was a little less damp than it was the night before. Was that the ozone, or was that just the fan from the ozone generator? If I had a fan blowing in my face for 13 hours, I'd probably feel a little dried out too. So I took our little fern inside and gave it the best care I knew how. I gave it good sunlight, but made sure to keep it out of direct sunlight. I kept it watered, but not saturated. I just took care of it like I would want to be treated if I were a fern. The six week checkup revealed more dead, dry leaves. I would later learn that these maidenhair ferns just don't put up with much abuse. So is all this damage caused by ozone or by the fan and the touching and handling and all the other abuse that I've put it through? Not knowing for sure, I decided to try a different plant. Meet the golden pothos. If you've ever seen a pothos plant, it was probably sitting on top of a bookshelf or somewhere else tall where its long vines could hang down and grow for years on end. So I fired up the ozone chamber and threw the pothos plant inside. I let it run all night long into the afternoon of the next day for a total of about 17 hours. The damage was pretty evident. A few leaves had some brown spots on them, kind of some discoloration. One was pretty well yellowed out and there were some definite defects that were not there the previous night. Then, just as I did with the fern, I took the pothos back inside and gave it tender loving care for another four weeks. And here we are at the four week check-in, and I think it's stabilized pretty well. The leaves that were yellowed out and browned out a little have uh, pretty much completely died off, but everything else seems to come back green and uh, overall in pretty good shape. So am I saying that my little backyard experiment invalidates decades of scientific research? No, of course not. But it's still been a fun demonstration in just how resilient plants can be if given a proper environment to heal and some time to bounce back. So now that I have this ozone chamber, it'd really be a shame not to use it. So let me know in the comments, tell me what you want to see put to the test against ozone gas. And hopefully you can draw this conclusion for yourself. Bottom line, if you're going to run an ozone generator in a room and you have a plant that you care about, even a little bit, just take the plant out of the room.